Now gather round for a story where I'm going to tell you about how I went up to a girl who I didn't know in my apartment hallway and met her and introduced myself. And I'm going to be very candid about the three positive things I did and the one very negative thing I did so you don't have to make the same mistake. This just happened about 30 minutes ago. And at the end of the story, what you're going to take from this is an easy way to go up to neighbors or maybe you move into a new apartment complex you don't know anyone who lives in the building with you. This is going to go through four steps that you can take every time regardless if you're in a neighborhood or an apartment complex or even in the workplace. Any place you need to meet new people, I'm going to take you through. Now, I did three good things and I did one bad thing. I messed up and I knew it was a problem. The minute it came out of my mouth, I was like, oh no. But I'm gonna tell you why you shouldn't do that so you know so you don't have to make that error going forward. So I was walking um, home from the coffee shop in the morning and you know, it takes me a little while to get the old grape spinning. You know, it's just you start out, you go to the coffee shop, it's just like the words just fumble out. I just feel like a complete idiot. But I talked, I was drinking the coffee and I'd been talking on the phone. So I was starting to catch a little bit of a rhythm. So I get into the elevator and the elevator at my house is really slow or my apartment, I should say, is really slow. And so if you miss it, it can be, you know, probably a three minute round trip before it comes back down. There's kind of a side elevator for one of the side areas. And so I'm walking in and right as the door's closing, I see a girl coming up. So I hold the Vader and she comes in right as the door's closing again, Another girl came in and so we had two and the second girl that came in had a golden doodle. I think it's a golden labradoodle. It's a black golden labradoodle. And this thing was young and full of excitement. And I actually knew this gal before, but the other one I didn't know. And the one I didn't know hits the floor that I'm on as well. And as we're going up, this dog is losing its mind. It's grabbing its owner. She's like, has this toy, it's grabbing, it's like pulling it around. I mean, it looked like it was mad. It wasn't playing, I mean, it probably was, but it looked like it was out of control. And I could see the other girl who's getting off at my floor that I didn't know, getting very uncomfortable. She wasn't laughing, she didn't think it was funny. She just kind of like, ha ha And then the dog like went really crazy. She's like, like she almost gasped. So I could tell she was very uncomfortable. So I picked up on that. So we both get off the elevator and she got off in front of me. I let her go first. What's something that I could have said? What's something that you might say knowing what you know from that short elevator trip? What's a way I could have broken the, broken the ice? Well, a great way to do it is to show empathy. I put a video, one of my first videos ever, about seven years ago, it's like called like leading people to comfort in the state of fear, or something like that. I don't even remember, I'll put a link card to it right here. It's probably pretty embarrassing. But I talk about if you can get in the person's head and be empathetic to what they're feeling when they didn't even communicate it, it's a great way to establish rapport. So what I said was, she was a little bit ahead of me. And so I knew talking to someone who's ahead of you, it's kind of a strange dynamic, right? Because they either have to turn around or they have to stop. And you know, if they're not that into it, they can keep walking. She's like, oh, whatever, buddy. So you're taking a little risk. So I needed to read the situation. So she's walking. I was like, can you believe having to live with that 24 hours a day? And she looked and she like took this breath. Like, you know, she was, she was pleased that somebody else had felt the same thing. And he communicated that to her. And she's like, oh man, she goes, yeah. She goes, that's one thing about dogs, I love them, but then I can come home to my dog-free zone and not have to worry about that chaos. So what, what do you pick up on that? How's the conversation going? Well, she communicated and contributed more than she would have had to. She even could have said, even though it was an empathetic state, she could have been, yeah, that'd be pretty terrible and kept walking. But she had slowed down, allowed me to catch up and gave me a lot more. She gave me a lot of conversational threads, you know, a personal thing. That's why I feel this way and I like to have a dog free home, but I love dogs. I just don't want that chaos. So she was rolling with it. She was inviting the conversation. And so I kept going, right? And I said, I said, hey, did you, I live on this floor too. Did you just move in? And she says, yeah, I did. Um, I just uh, took a job down the street at a specific gym. And I said, oh, nice. I said, what unit are you in? What unit are you in? What unit are you in? Bah, bah, bah. And I knew it. And I was like, I was actually thinking about the gym that she worked at and I knew it. And I was thinking about saying something like that, but instead I decided not to. You don't ask somebody, especially a girl who probably lives by herself, what unit she lives in. Don't ever do that. Even a dude, even if you're meeting a guy at your apartment, it's just creepy to ask what specific unit they're living. Like, why do you want to know? I'm just talking to you. Luckily she was comfortable enough with me. She's like, she gave you the unit, just like right around there. And, um, 
And so what did I do? I knew that could be discomforting. And so I jumped right onto the last thing as I was ending uh, the area where I was getting to my unit right there. And I said, oh, really cool. I'm sure I'll see you around. Nice meeting you. Okay. So by me backing off of that sub to be, oh, hey, I just live right here. You're just right there. I'm sure I'll say a lot, right? Nothing like that. Backed off it, act like I didn't even say it, even though I knew it was a faux pas and it was the wrong thing to say. It was good that she took it in stride the way she did. Because if she would have been like, oh, uh, why do you want to know? I'd have, I would have actually, if I would have done that, I would have just addressed it. Like, you know, I was actually thinking about something else. The minute I said that, I realized how creepy that was. That's a great way to handle any time you mess up. Just address it. Don't just be like, uh, you know, I was just curious. Just address it. Yeah, yeah, that was a stupid thing to say. I can't believe it actually came out of my mouth. I didn't have to do that because I just formed enough comfort beforehand by that empathetic question, by getting in her head and by verbalizing uh, the discomfort that she felt. She felt, you know, more rapport to me. So even asking that creepy question, she went with it. And then you end it with just, hey, nothing too creepy. And I'm like, hey, can I get your number? We can, we'll go out sometime. Hey, I got something going Friday. I got friends around. No, no. First time you meet him, just super cool and chill. Hey, really nice to meet you. I'm sure I'll see you around. That's it. Great way to end it. So you can use those four steps. And one of them is the one you don't use. You never ask exactly where. If you're in a neighborhood, you can be like, you know, they live in a house. It's a little less creepy than an apartment, someone who can live by themselves. Hey, what, what, what house are you in? That's a, that's a normal question, but an apartment, shy away from that. A lot of people ask me specifically for story time because they like to learn from my experiences, you know, because I'm very honest about them. And even in the faux pas I made, you can learn by that and never ask somebody the apartment that they're in, right? By hearing my mistakes, you don't have to make those mistakes. If you like that kind of stuff and you're not following me on Instagram, go to Charisma Matrix and follow me right now. I'm putting a lot more content out on that platform that won't be on YouTube that you're gonna be able to learn from. And if when you hear me talk about going up to somebody in your neighborhood or in an apartment, and you're like, I don't really have the confidence to do that. I don't know what I'd say. That sounded really cool, but I don't. Get that handled. I've got a program called the Social Invincibility Program. You can touch or click up here or go to socialinvincibility.com. It's a quick program. It's a cheap program. You can knock it out. And at the end of it, you'll be able to see the matrix. This channel is called the Charisma Matrix because I believe most people can't see what's going on around them socially, right? They do things one time, they get a reaction. Seems like they do the same thing another time, they get a different reaction. They don't understand. They can't see the matrix of why things are happening, the causality of this and this. And when you can, you can act confidently and go up and talk to people and know you're going to make a good impression and know they're going to like you. It's a really strong place to be. It's a strong place to live. Now, if you haven't seen this video right here, you're going to like it. Click on it right now and I'll talk to you there.